Today's class will be given by His Grace Hari Lila Prabhuji on Srimad Bhagavatam 4.1.39. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you so much Prabhuji for giving you your association and valuable time in this conference call. Thank you so much Prabhuji. You can uh, take over the call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. Uh, my Dhanbhat Pranam to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis assembled on this conference call. Vanchakal Patarubhyasya Krupasindu Bhyayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha. So, uh, before I start from text 39, I just wanted to give you a little bit overview of the entire fourth canto. The third canto ends with the description of Lord Kapila's instructions to his mother Devhuti. And this fourth canto begins with the description of Manu's descendants. So we'll come to that. But my main point that I'm trying to uh, give some synopsis on the uh, fourth canto is about this particular canto has 31 chapter which describes the four goals of human life of for liberation for common people which are dharma religiosity artha economic development karma fulfillment of desires moksha liberation. So as we, we will notice as we go through this canto, chapter 1 to 7, first chapters, first seven chapters, they describe about dharma because the seven essential purifications required, they are place, time, mantra, body, mind, senses, and wealth. And then the next five chapters, 8 to 12, that they will describe regarding artha because of five means means sadhan are required for getting artha you require blessing from parents blessing from guru you need to do some purusar some endeavor uh, destiny is also plays a role and mercy of the supreme prasad the godhead krishna that is without any doubt it is required. Then after that, next 11 chapters, 13 to 23, they will describe regarding the karma because one can fulfill desires with help of uh, 11 senses, which is uh, five knowledge acquiring senses and five working senses, and the 11th is mind. And then the last eight chapters, 24 to 31, will describe uh, moksha because material nature constitutes eight separated material energies of the Lord. And one who surpasses that can liberate himself. Lord Krishna describes these eight separated energies in Bhagavad Gita 7.4. So remember the Bhumi Rapi Nalovayu that was described as the eight uh, separated energies of Krishna. Now these four goals, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha, depicts that if by following true dharma, one can use artha to satisfy kama, and he can get liberation. So in the first seven chapters, as I mentioned, dharma, uh, regarding dharma, the story of Lord Shiva and Sati is described. The next five chapters of artha, that describes Dhruva's endeavor to get a bigger kingdom. And the next 11 chapters describe King Prutu's endeavor. And the last 8 chapters describe the story of Prachetas for liberation. So this is kind of an overall view of this fourth canto. Now coming to this first chapter of this Bhagavad Gita, I mean sorry, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Maitre Muni is describing 
the history of descendants of Manu Maharaj to Vidura. Uh, so, as we know uh, from the previous uh, lectures that you have heard, Manu and Satrupa had three daughters and two sons. So, uh, one of them daughter is Devuti, like Akuti Prasuti Dev. Devuti married to Kardama Muni. And Devuti and Kardama have nine daughters. And one of them, uh, and one son uh, who is Kapil Bhagavan. Now, out of these nine daughters, uh, Ansuya was married to a Trimuni. So, that episode is coming from 20, a few verses are going to be over it. But uh, in Bhagavatam, if you notice, uh, we find there are two primary dynasties described in the whole Bhagavatam. Sun dynasty and moon dynasty. The Sun dynasty begins with Kala and Marichi, in which Lord Ramchandra appeared. And moon dynasty begins with Ansuya and Atri, in which Lord Krishna appeared. So, when Maitre Muni told Vidura that Ansuya gave birth to these uh, three very famous sons, Soma, Dattatreya, and uh, Durvasa, uh, who were partial representations of Lord Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva respectively. So, Vidura was astonished to hear that. And he asked the questions to Maitre Muni. He asked her, how is it that the three, desire, three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, who are the creator, maintainer, and destroyer of the whole creation, became the offspring of the wife of Atrimuni? Then Maitre Muni replies that when Lord Brahma ordered Atrimuni to create progeny, he, with his wife Ansuya, went to the valley of the mountain Ruksa to perform austerities. Now, while performing severe austerities, Atrimuni desired to have a son exactly like the Lord of the universe, of whom he has taken shelter. So, at that time, the three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, Lord Shiva, came to the hermitage of the Atrimuni, who were seated on different carriers. All these Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva has different carriers, as you know. Lord Brahma has a swan, Lord Vishnu has a Garuda, and Lord Shiva has a bull. And each one was holding uh, in had their hand, like Brahma was holding Kusa grass, Vishnu was holding this, and Lord Shiva is you know, Damru, you know, Dam. So, uh, Atri Muni welcomed them by offering his uh, prostrated obeisances and began to offer prayers. Then, uh, in text 28, it says that he surprisingly, uh, he surprisingly asked them, uh, Atri Muni was surprised by seeing them. So, he says that, I thought of Supreme Prasadva Godhead desiring a son like him. How come all three of you have come here? Then in the text 30, it gives basically the explanation of why they appear, you know. Basically what it is, is that I'll just cut short on that one. All three deities came to Atrimuni because all are the lords of the universe in three different modes. Since Atrimuni did not specifically mention whom he wanted, all three, Brahma, Vishnu, and Lord appears. Uh, they came before the, uh, Atrimuni. So, here, uh, there's a couple points I want to mention about that Prabhupada drives in the purport of verse 30 regarding the... Uh, one's determination is fulfilled according to the strength of one's devotion. It is very important. It's kind of an, uh, a lesson that we have to learn from Angirana and Soya that 
uh, I mean sorry, Atri and Ansaya. So the Atri Muni has a has a determination to get a son like Lord of the Universe. And then he fulfill uh, to fulfill it, I mean he he did the austerity. So basically this aspect is also very important for us sadhakas practicing devotee in Krishna consciousness is gone that uh, there are some examples regarding uh, you can say Dhru Maharaj's determination uh, when he was uh, chastised by his uh, upper ma- mother the uh, then he also made a determination to get a uh, big kingdom you know and then he went off for doing austerity so on the way the Narad Muni came and tasted him but he was very firm in, in determination and then he said that no I want to do that you know Narad Muni allured him in so many ways but he did not budge and he wanted so that determination now according to that he's going to do austerity and was going to fulfill so uh, one point is very important regarding this uh, also we know in Prabhupada's life that he made a determination to fulfill the mission of his guru and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and as we have many times we have many heard this thing that he really followed the verse which is given in Bhagavad Gita 241 which says Guru Nandana." So, it says that those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O beloved child of Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branch. So, if you notice, Sela Prabhupada very nicely explains the meaning of this Vyavasait Meka intelligence in his purport to the uh, this 241 verse. A strong faith <coughs> that by Krishna consciousness one will <coughs> be elevated to the highest perfection of life is called Vyavasait Meka intelligence. Unfortunately, <coughs> we don't have this faith and keep running around in different directions in an attempt to satisfy the people around us by our individual effort. But reality is that we can never satisfy others 100% by our effort. No matter whatever good deeds we do to them now, there will definitely some situ- <coughs> situation where we might commit some mistake as a result of which we will we probably might commit some mistake as a result of which we will displease them so though we do not like or want it in material relationship our mistakes are remembered longer than our good actions that is an experience for everybody also, when we are involved in such activities, keeping other people in the center, we would have to enjoy both the good and bad results of whatever actions we do. But service rendered unto Lord Krishna with unflinching faith is completely different. <clears throat> like as Krishna promises in verse, uh, previous verse 240 of the Bhagavad Gita, where he says, Swalpam alpa dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. So, in this endeavor, there is no loss or determination. And a little advancement on this path can perfect one from the most dangerous type of fear. So, Krishna is so kind that he remembers even the little amount of service we do unto him. <coughs> <clears throat> and at the end of the Bhagavad Gita last chapter he also uh, says as you know Sarva Dharma Antarita Jamaami Kam Sraram Vajav Aham Tarm Sarva Paapya Vya Moksha Syami Mahasu Chaha he says you abandon all the <coughs> excuse me 
religious and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So, uh, this kind of determination, when we do devotional service, then at, depending on the uh, level of uh, devotional service, we get the reason, you know. When we engage in devotional service, then the reactions of our good and bad deeds are also burned out of Krishna, out of... Uh, they, were, they will be burned by Krishna, and so we will be free from those reactions as well. Most importantly, when we please Krishna, and <clears throat> then everyone is be, will be pleased. Uh, for example, when Durva Samuni and his group of disciples uh, requested Pandava to offer them feast, then Pandavas were in exile in the forest. They were worried. As the Draupadis Apsai Patra was empty. Fearing Durga Samuni's anger, Draupadi prayed to Lord Krishna. Then immediately appeared before her and asked her to feed him. And uh, so uh, Draupadi uh, showed him the empty Apsai Patra. But Krishna took out of some kind of a leaf from the side of the that pot and then he ate it. Now, as soon as Krishna, here is the anger is satisfied, uh, the Durvasa, hunger of Durvasa Muni and all the disciples also satisfied. So, Srila Prabhupada says in the purport to that verse that, as by watering the root of the tree, one automatically distributes water to the leaves and branches. So, by acting in Krishna consciousness, one can render the highest service to everyone, namely uh, self, family, society, country, community, etc. If Krishna is satisfied by one's action, then everyone will be satisfied. So, if people around us are displeased, then it is important to introspect ourselves and check whether we are displeasing Krishna. If our thoughts, words, and deeds uh, are doubted for the pleasure of the Lord, then there is no way that people around us would be pleased. But how to please Krishna? Srila Prabhupada gives us the answer for this by quoting the verse uh, by Srila Yusar Chakravi Thakur, which we sing every morning, right? He says, Yasya Prasada Bhagavad Prasado. Yasya aprasada nagati kutopi. Dhyam stuvam tasya yasastri sandhyam. Vande gurusi charanaradindam. By satisfaction of the spiritual master, the supreme personality of Godhead becomes satisfied. And by not satisfying the spiritual master, there is no chance of being promoted to the plane of Krishna consciousness. I should therefore meditate and pray for His mercy three times a day and offer my respectful obeisances unto Him, my spiritual master. So, Srila Prabhupada, in the concluding paragraph of the purport, says that the whole process, however, depends on perfect knowledge of the soul beyond the conception of the body, not theoretically, but practically, when there is no longer a chance for sense gratification manifested in fruiting activities. So, uh, there is also uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, we have to, the devotee has to uh, very careful in performing devotional service. Krishna conscious person knows that devotional service is a purification process. Since we have taken a shelter of this lotus feet of Lord Krishna, we may cross the ocean of birth and death depending on our sincere endeavor and mercy of Lord Krishna. Only requirement is we have to remain steady with determination in our sadhana. So that determination 
is I'm trying to emphasize. <coughs> you know, to remain steady in devotional service, we need constant hammering. Srila Prabhupada also gives us many punches through his writing. Like in Ramayana, if you take example, Hanumanji could cross the ocean because he took the shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Ram while crossing the ocean to find out where Sita Mataji is. He was stopped by three demons, as you know, Sursa, Sihika, and Lankini at different places. But he could cross all the hurdles because he was under protection of Lord Rama. When Hanumanji was caught by the demons, he gave them a punch. And due to the touch of a pure devotee, their bodies got purified and they became devotees and started preaching and glorified Lord Rama. Our condition is also like the demons. We tend to live in ignorance and that is why continuous hammering is required to remain steady in our devotional life. So in Bhagavad Gita, there is another verse, it gives the reference of uh, 6.24, where it says that, Sarnishchayen yoktavyo yoga anirvana chetasaha sankalpa prabhavan kamastaktva sarvana seshataha manseandriya gramam vinimya samantataha the translation he says that one should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with determination and faith and not be deviated from the path. One should abandon without exception all material desires born of material speculation and thus control all the senses on all sides of the mind. So here, Srila Prabhupada quotes the powerful example uh, in this purport of a sparrow. If you remember, if you read the Bhagavad Gita, it is given very nicely. It says that regarding the determination, on this point of determination, it says, as for determination, one should follow the example of the sparrow who lost her eggs in the waves of ocean. A sparrow laid her eggs on the shore of the ocean, but the big ocean carried away the eggs on its waves. The sparrow became very upset and asked the ocean to return her eggs. The ocean did not even consider her appeal. So the uh, sparrow decided to dry up the ocean. She began to pick out the water in her small beak and everyone laughed at her for her impossible determination. The news of her activity spread and at last Garuda, the gigantic bird carrier of Lord Vishnu, heard it. He became compassionate toward his small sister bird and so he came to see the sparrow. Garuda was very pleased by the determination of the small sparrow and he promised to help. Thus Garuda at once asked the ocean to return her eggs. Uh, otherwise he himself took up the work of the sparrow. The action was, uh, sorry, the ocean was frightened at this and returned the eggs. Thus the sparrow became happy by the grace of Garuda. So Srila Prabhupada explained that Bhakti Yoga in Krishna Consciousness may appear to be a very difficult job, but if anyone follows the principle with great determination, success is sure for the uh, rigid practitioner. The Lord will help, uh, you know, Lord will surely help. God help those who help themselves. Because uh, Rupa Goswami also uh, regarding this uh, he is a Bhakti Shastri, I mean Bhakti uh, uh, Yoga, Rupa Goswami, uh, in his Nectar of Instruction, writes the verse, Utsahat Nishchaya Dhairya Tat Tat Karma Pravartanad, Sand Tyagat Sato Vrutte, Sadbir Bhaktir Prasidhyadi. So one can execute the process of Bhakti Yoga successfully with full-hearted enthusiasm perseverance and determination by following the prescribed duties in the association of devotees and by engaging 
completely in activities of goodness. So, this are the, we can see in Prabhupada also how he made his lifetime preparation to fulfill the desire of his Guru and also to fulfill the mission of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, because this Kali Yuga is, there is no any other way except chanting the holy name of the Lord. And our root is that Prabhupada has started this movement by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And those who has come up to the level of, you know, they have earned some Sukruti, like Agya Sukruti, pious activities. And as a result, they join Prabhupada. We see now this uh, ISKCON movement is, has uh, uh, been around for in so many countries by now, you know, and uh, Hare Krishna movement is, is so much popular, and it will get popular as time goes, because Prabhupada has given uh, such a system and such a process that uh, people were they will definitely get success in following these things. So this is regarding that thing, and then I will read. Today is from verse text 39, as Mataji has uh, instructed me. So, in text 39, Kratorapi Kriya Abharya Valkhilyanu Suyata Rosin Sastri Sastrani Jolato Brahmate Jasa. Translation Kratu's wife, Kriya, gave birth to 60,000 great sages, named the Valkhalyas. All these sages were greatly advanced in spiritual knowledge, and their bodies were illuminated by such knowledge. Purport. Kriya was the sixth daughter of Kadamuni, and she produced 60,000 sages who were known as Valkyrias because they all retired from family life as one prasthas. Text 40. Urjayam jagmire putra vasisthasya parantapa chitra ketu pradhanaste sapta brahma shayo malaha The great sage vasistha Begot in his wife, Urja, sometimes called Arundhati, seven spotlessly great sages, headed by the sage name Chitraketu. Text 41. Chitraketu hu suros, Chitraketu hu suros chistha, virja mitra evacha, ulmano vasumud. The names of these seven sages are as follows. Chitraketu, Surochi, Virja, Mitra, Ulban, Vasubhrudhyan, and Dhyuman. Some other very competent sons were born from Vasistha's other wife. Urja, who is sometimes known as Arundhati, and who was the wife of her sister, was the ninth daughter of Kadamuni. Text 42. Chittistvartha varnaha patni lebe putram drutavatam dadhyastam asvasirasam brugor vasam nibodhame Chitti, wife of the sage Atharva, gave birth to a son named Asvasira by accepting a great vow called the Dhyanj. Now you may hear from me about the descendants of the sage Brugu. The wife of Atharva, known as Chitti, 
is also known as Shanti. She was the eighth daughter of Kardamamuni. Text 43. Bruguhu Khyatam Mahabhagaha Vapnyam Putranaji Janat Dhataram Chavidhataram Sriyam Chavagavat Param Param Translation. The sage Brugu was highly fortunate. In his wife, known as Khyati, he begot two sons named Dhata and Vidata, and one daughter named Sri, who was very much devoted to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 44. Ayatim niyatim chaiva sute merus tayoradat tapyam tayorabhatam mrukandaha pranayevacho. The sage Meru had two daughters named Ayati and Niyati, whom he gave in charity to Dhata and Vidhata. Ayati and Niyati gave birth to two sons, Brukunda and Prana. Text 45. Markandeya Murkandasya Prana Veda Siramuni Kavishya Bhargavo Yasya Bhagavan Nusana Sutaha From Maharaj Markande Muni was born and from Prana the sage Veda Shira whose son was Ushna Sukracharya also known as Kavi. Thus Kavi also belonged to the descendants of the Brugu dynasty. Text 46, 47. Tayete munayaha aksapta lokans sagair bhavayan esa kardamo vitra santana kathistava sranavataha sraddhanasya sadhya paparaha paraha Prasuti manavim daksa upeye mehi atma jaha. My dear Vidu, the population of the universe was thus increased by the descendants of these sages and the daughters of Kardama. Anyone who hears the descriptions of this dynasty with faith will be relieved from all sinful reactions. Another of Manu's daughters, known as Prasuti, married the son of Brahma, named Daksha. Text 48. Tasyam sasar jadu hitruhu sode samalo chanaha tayota sad bhadari. Tvayo dasadda dharmaya tathai kamadnaye vibhuhu. Ducks begot sixteen very beautiful daughters with lotus-like eyes in his wife Prasuti. So as we know, the Devuti and Kardam has three daughters, Akuti, Prasuti. So we have... Then the uh, Akuti is now, this is Prasuti and Daksa, and in turn they have 16 beautiful daughters. And 13 were given to the marriage to Dharma, and one daughter was given to Agni. And 2952, Pitru Bhyaye Kam Yukte Bhyo, Mavaye Kam Bhavachide, Sraddha Maitri Daya Santis, Sustha. Tis pusti kriyon pihi buddhir medati tikshahi murti dharmasya patnaya sraddha suta subham maitri prasadam payam tadaya sante su kamram tusti smayam pustir suyata yogam kriyon te darpa vartha Buddhirya, Buddhirya Suyata, 
मेधा स्मृति क्षेम ही प्रश्रय सुतम मूर्ति सर्वभूमारायण ऋषि translation one of the remaining two daughters was given in charity to the pitrulok where she resides very amicably and the other was given to lord shiva who is the deliverer of sinful persons from material and entanglement the names of the 13 daughters of daksha who were given to dharma Asraddha, Maitri, Daya, Santi, Tushti, Pushti, Kriya, Unnati, Buddhi, Medha, Titiksha, Hri, and Murti. These thirteen daughters produced the following sons. Asraddha gave birth to Subha, Maitri produced Prasada, Daya gave birth to abaya sandhi ke bar to sukha pushti ke bar to mudha pushti ke bar to smaya kriya ke bar to yoga unnati ke bar to darpa buddhi ke bar to artha medha ke bar to smriti titiksha ke bar to kshema and hri ke bar to prasaya murti a reservoir of all respectable qualities He birthed to see Narayan, the supreme personality of Godhead. So we'll stop here and take any questions or comments or any reflections from what you have heard. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dandwad Pranam, all good Srila Prabhupada and Guruji. Thank you very much for your wonderful education. Gopinath Ki Jai Ho. Thank you so much for giving your explanation for the fourth canto of summarization of fourth canto was so uh, wonderful so thank you so much for giving hari krishna thank you thank you anybody else have any comment or questions uh, hari krishna prabhu ji danat pranam all glories to sri prabhupad and guru maharaj uh, this is the last verse is so interesting prabhu Uh, this you read uh, 49 to 52 means uh-huh. how, how the 13 daughter of daksha who are given to dharma and strada this all they produce uh, uh, that is uh, i was uh, just contemplating is so nice uh, produce following the sanstrada gave birth to suva so all these things so when we develop these qualities we automatically get this kind of things uh, daya gave to avaya shanti gave and bosh to sukha and all these things is so interesting to me titiksha gave bosh to shima is all this ah uh, you can explain maybe a little bit more in this bosh from who if you have any things to say what is What did you say? The last, I didn't hear the last sentence you said. Can you elaborate a little bit more in this part? Uh, last one is a very interesting this time. Oh, from 49 to 52. Well, as you know, uh, the, the remaining daughters was given in charity to Pitruloka. Yeah, the... Uh, So what is it that you want to know about it? All the, the names of certain daughters uh, of ducks. Uh, yes, or, yes, uh, Prabhu. They are uh, themselves produced. I mean, and they gave the artists like since 
<laughs> since uh, all the so on, uh, so uh, systematically they are putting all the thetic gay bars to the same uh, all these things is actually uh, this is a byproduct here so in we have that quality the same mm -hmm. is a byproduct means all these things can elaborate a little bit more prove that yeah see the prasuti this is regarding if they talk about prasuti is once is the so Ducks and Prasuti has 16 daughters, as it is said here. So 13 were given to Swa, uh, uh, I mean, thir 13 daughters were given uh, to Dharma. And then in Pitru Loka, they have given to Swada. Uh, and uh, Sankar Mahadev, they gave Sati. And Swaha, uh, they gave Agni. So that is how the 16 daughters are married, you know. 13 to 1 person, and other 3 to 3 individual. And then they describe about, uh, there are 13 uh, daughters, you know, and they have given 13 daughters' uh, sons' names also here. Uh, as it says that Sraddha has a Subha, Maitri has Prasad, Daya has Abhay, Santi has Sukh, Pusti has Mood, Pusti, Smai. Kriya has yoga, Unnati has uh, dar darpa, Buddhi has artha, Medha has smruti, Titik sakshema, uh, Lajja has prasad. The last one, third in murti, he gave birth to two sons, and that is Nard Narayan. Now, regarding that Nard Narayan, if you remember, they were uh, both. Uh, and uh, both brothers, they went to Gandhamadan Parvat for austerity. So actually, they are the uh, uh, Aumsa, you know, basically they are the uh, of, uh, and uh, that same uh, Yugal, uh, of, uh, again they came in the Yadukul Bhushan Krishna and Kurukul Tilak Arjun. Uh, uh, they came as that, and then uh, they have uh, uh, taken the birth from uh, this earth. So this is this Nar Narayan is in uh, Badrikasram. But I mean later on uh, the same came as a Krishna and Arjun, as you as we know from the history of the Bhagavatam, you know. And then uh, maybe there is a the Pitru Ganas, They are they are four. Uh, like Agni, so Bahirsa, Swada, Somya, and, and actually, Silla Prabhupada quotation is the fourth kind of Srimad Bhagavanam described uh, secondary creativity. So, these are the, I mean, there is nothing. Else, but actually, it is the genealogical or, you know, uh, the Maharaj Manu's uh, daughters, you know, here, the Prasuti, and then we will know later on about Devhuti, you know. Yes, Prabhu, yes. Yeah, I think Sati, yeah. We read the Devhuti in third canto. Mm. <coughs> yes. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, bro. Thank you very much. This is Damodaranam Das for a very nice lecture. Especially the overview you gave in the beginning that the fourth canto is divided into four parts according to Dharma, Artha, Moksha, and uh, Kama and Moksha. Bro, yes. why did you, why did you, what do you think uh, Prabhupada labeled as creation of the fourth order? What does he mean by creation of the fourth order? Uh, that, yeah, I couldn't find an explanation. The fourth can be creations of the fourth order, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, there must be a specific actually, reason why he. There must that. be some reason. Yeah, you're right. That is a, that's a good research question. Probably we'll look into that. <laughs> creation. So of what the I fourth. thought of was, what I thought of was, you know, because it describes about uh, the various genealogy of the Roma Maharaj and all. He is actually the grandson of Brahma, so he uh -huh. becomes the fourth generation. Brahma being the first generation, 
then you know the manus and then uh, uttana pad and then dhruva so it became yeah. the fourth generation so i thought of that maybe the reason why it's called the yeah or could be we can look more into it. yeah i think from manu and satrupa the human race starts from manu before that i mean the like biological a generation biological progeny and all this kind of thing that is start from manu and satrupa before that brahma produced you know from manas from this from there you know without the help of female you know part right, but manu right, satrupa right. from that point on you know we see that biological or you know by uh, the combination of right. uh, male and female you know the, the generation has been started from that point manu right. has also right. given a lot of uh, codes for mankind for human you know manu sanhita probably you have heard about that scripture manu sanhita is given right. by manu you know who is nothing but that, that is the uh, codes to live uh, you know how to live a human life so sort of. Right, right. Uh, Each one also has its life. own court. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Right. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, anybody else have anything? Any comment? So probably Mataji, it is uh, time to end the call here. Yes, so we want to talk to you about the past and the way which are part of the name 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 of the name. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Prabhuji.